Welcome to another Golden Age preview with your boys Kevin Shortboxed and Nate from Key High Collectibles. Um, we introduced ourselves last time. Let's do another little intro. Uh, I do business development for the company, and I love sweet comics. Uh, Nate, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, Kevin, good to be back on with you. Uh, Key High Collectibles on Instagram. I'm assisting Shortbox in and building out all these Golden Age auctions. Eventually, going to start working our way into some pulp magazine auctions as well. So this has been a bunch of fun. Um, coming off the first auction, I think everyone is super happy with how that went. I agree. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all the all sellers were real happy on hammers. Buyers were super stoked on the books they got. Yeah. Uh, we had a bunch of first-time bidders, first-time users on the app join up specifically for the Golden Age auction and score some, you know, four-figure books. Pretty, pretty incredible yeah. to like pull people out of the ether to participate in something based on the weight and importance of the books that you're selling. So that was pretty cool. Absolutely, man. I think, and the main thing I heard, I think everyone was just surprised <laughs> last year with was how quick everything moved. I mean, yeah. auction was fast, payment was fast, shipping was fast. I think yeah. that's like everyone I talked to post auction was like, that's probably the quickest process I've ever seen. So yeah. that was a big win. I know that was something Shortbox wanted to do well. So it sounds like that was achieved. Yeah, executed successfully. The um, we had some some winners for uh, for items that paid that night when the auction closed, and the books were packed up and shipped out the next day. And the sellers yeah. had their payouts. Uh, there were a few, you know, ACH payouts or payments which took a few days to clear. But even then, people were getting their payments within like a week. So and very very cool. Unheard of, like yeah. <laughs> with in the auction world to be that fast. So. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, I think that's going to be a huge differential for short pause. And I think that's something yeah. people are going to continue love. And let's, you know, keep that going. How was, yeah. uh, how was Heroes Con? I was talking with everyone out there. Heroes was so cool. Um, I got I got a whole weekend to spend with all the lovely ladies that are up in the auction this week for Golden Age. Mm -hmm. uh, we were showing them off at the booth and talking to people about them. Um, you know, we got some books in this lot or this uh, this auction that are, coming up on a hundred years old. Um, yeah. I heard some really cool stories from some people that I'll tell you about um, when we get into a couple of these books. Uh, but just across the board, man, the show is bar none, like the best comic show in the country, in my opinion. Like Baltimore yeah. holds, a, holds a pretty close second place when it comes to just the caliber of creators and comics and dealers in the room. But I like, uh, I like Charlotte a little more than I like Baltimore. Baltimore, don't hate me. Um, but no, Charlotte's I, got like the bomb yeah. barbecue, like everyone's super freaking nice. Um, just overall, like spectacular show. I, I hope I get to do heroes for the rest of my life. That that would be that would be a success what, in my mind professionally. Booth, what show got the most attention, do you think? For the auction books. Which one did you see the most people comment on? For the auction books, there was so I talked a lot about the uh comic was it circus the comic riot yeah. just because that one was like a super old book um yeah you know obviously the planet is incredible like that's not one that you see every day especially in that pedigree no. um and then i you know there were a couple i geeked out on pretty hard with people the um what was it mystery comics the schomburg cover with the red robot yeah. on it that's like one of my awesome. favorite schomburg ones is just because it's such a cool looking robot cover it's such a cool robot. It reminds me of like a sock and bopper robot, but with like that yeah. sci-fi twist. It's got the real kind of block head on it and everything. Yeah, it looks yeah. very uh, sci-fi classic. No, that's yeah. a super fun one. In that's fact, my uh, I have a tattoo that's got the Kevbot on it. It's a big blockhead <laughs> robot blowing up some jet fighters and some buildings. Yeah, I I've, never, I've never noticed that one for you. <laughs> <laughs> it even says Kevbot right on it, so you that's know it's funny. legit. Speaking of comics, <laughs> right? That is the first book we're highlighting today. Yeah, let's, so uh, let's jump into that. Let me switch yeah. our format real quick. Cool. So we're going to, just similar to last week, we're going to go over a handful of books, maybe four or five books, just kind of talk a little bit about their importance and what we expect the performance on these to be. And then we'll also talk a little, a little bit about some of the other cool covers like that um, mystery comics and stuff like that. So, so let's yeah. dive in. First one, Circus Comics Riot 1. Uh, to get some of the data out of the way first, 24 universal copies, by no means a lot of them out there. 
Uh, yeah. We expect yeah. FMV on this one to fall between about 3,000, 3,500. Uh, 7.5 in this book is pretty crazy. This is like yeah. you mentioned, yeah. this is an old book. This is right released at the turning point of getting to the hero age. So we're getting away from the kind of the funny comic strip stuff. And we're getting into action one and all that. And then the hero era is about to take off. So this is right towards the end of that kind of traditional funny comic strip style. So yeah. Yeah. a lot of cool stuff about this book, man. Um, very old, very rare. And I think something people don't really know about it because the label doesn't tell you is this is a beginning ground for a lot of heavy hitters. Uh, you've got Basil Wolverton early stuff in here. Bob Kane from Batman. He's got early work here. Will Eisner, Jack Cole. I mean, you got a lot of heavy hitters that were yeah. playing around in this style before the Golden Age hero stuff blows up and goes in there. Right. So, yeah, you have a lot of important people in the industry that are – this is some of their early work is in this book. So was this, was this book a pre mad comics book? Like I was looking at some oh, yeah. of the internal art on this and like, like a lot of the, it just reminded me a lot of like the Kurtzman stuff and yep. you know, just That's a lot of the art you, from that era. Funny you mention that. Cause I was going to say, this is really early work and it's heavily features Basil Wolverton. I think yeah. you actually have an interior with some of his work. Yeah, let's, uh, let's flip over to that real quick. So we wait before we move on from this picture. I want to point out not only is this a seven point five from nineteen thirty eight, mind blowing already. Look at the uh, look at the stamp on the cover at the end of the word circus. This was a book that was withdrawn from a public library system and is still a seven point five to this day. I mean, you got to think about how many people handled this book. Yeah. back in the day and handle that yeah. and this too if i remember right this is not a small comic book. it's a no it's a it's a thick boy yeah yeah so it's, yeah i mean ridiculous that it survived in that shape yeah yeah okay i okay so now's the, now i'm going to tell you one of the stories i heard from one of the uh attendees at the show so we were talking about that stamp on the cover and the library system and how they had these cool comics this guy told me a story about when he was a kid he went to his local library and he was checking out comics that would blow our minds and he had like an action one two and three uh just just his pictures of his, his mom took pictures of him reading it on the park bench outside the library and so he had these books and uh there was a big storm coming and he was going to have to take a late fee on these books and his mom was like you should go return these to the library it's not it doesn't make sense to pay a couple cents you know at the time a lot of money for kids um it doesn't make sense to to pay you know several cents to hold on to these longer he takes them down to the library returns them flash flood happens and and wipes the library away dude I, that guy like probably if he would have held on to that book and paid two cents to keep it another day he'd have his very own copy of action comics yeah. one two and three That's that was such those, a cool uh, story it just blew my it's mind one of those butterfly effect things where you're like <laughs> yeah I, yeah i was one choice away from who knows yeah. <laughs> so yeah yeah super reason. cool all right let's take a look at this internal page so yes get into some early basil words and his style was decades ahead of its time yeah. um kind of almost trippy psychedelic -y, the big uh eyes all that and you see this style heavy across kurtzman uh crumb getting into the mad comic stuff the underground comic stuff i mean this is he was the pioneer for that style. So yeah. you see yeah. some of his real early work in this book. Um, definitely super unique for its time. I mean, you can instantly recognize his work because if it's from this era and it looks like that, no one was doing anything even similar to that. Yeah. Really cool to see. A fun fact uh, people can, or a little question for people is, so this heavily features a uh, character named Spacehawk. It's early sci-fi from Wolverton. There's one Golden Age cover that I can think of in all Golden Age comics where Space Hawks from Wolverton appear. So let's see if someone can figure out what book that is in the comments later. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. You want to... Absolute beast. Um, I think if you're like an appreciator of the historic value of this yeah. book, it is more than the FMV. Uh, if you're really looking to have something that's a piece of the comic history, this is a really cool one to go after. Yeah. And I'm yeah, not, I'm not find it. there's 
it's a rumor out there that somewhere in this book there is a superman is in somewhere in this book and this is or that would be really early this would be right after or right around action comics one so yeah that's i couldn't find any image of it but I'm not going to crack out the uh, 7.5 and go look for it. So yeah, somehow, I was going to yeah. say I did have a hard time finding internal pages for this for the most part. You know, it's kind of yeah. funny how many omnibuses and collections and compendiums and all this stuff are put out. But when you get into like the early, early, almost like you wouldn't call it pre golden age, but the very beginning of golden age comics, it's hard to find those internal pages. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's I was lucky out. enough to find pages for planet and jumbo, but like, yeah, one or two pages here there. Platinum Age. So a lot of the funny comic strip type stuff. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's hard enough to find the books, let alone, there's just not a lot of scanned material. So, yeah. I mean, if someone wants to do the research out there, um, I believe there is an image of Superman in here somewhere. That's wild. So, yeah. A lot of cool stuff about this book. And next one coming up to the plate is going to be the Big Boy Flash Comics 71. Um, Super cool book. Get some of the date on it. 20 universal copies, which for a, this was a big title. Flash Comics, major DC superhero book. 20 is nothing for yeah. a major book or major title like this in DC. Uh, this is tied for highest grade. I believe you have three total 9.4s, which is pretty crazy. That tells yeah. you that you know, of 20 universals, the surviving copies, there's a lot of nice surviving copies out there. Yeah. No, so, and we expect be on this one to fall between about 4,500, 5,500. Uh, some cool pointers on this one. Big Apple pedigree, very, very large uh, collection. Um, it's known for pristine white pages. I believe almost all the Gold Mage books have white pages that are big wow. Apple. Yeah, it's that's pretty crazy for that one. Yeah. And also, I love these. Uh, Hawkman is the cover hero of probably about. 40 percent of flash comics golden age and i think yeah. the hawk golden age hawkman covers are so cool yeah his he costume just, is the bomb dude like i love that hawk that mantle and all that them. yeah i mean if you yeah. go back and look at a lot of the mold off covers for flash comics it's some of my favorite because yeah. hawkman just is was one of the more better drawn badass looking characters of that time yeah so i think he's one of the i mean i don't know i think i like golden age hawkman was was way cooler looking than his Silver Age and on counterpart. But I don't know. There's some mm -hmm. cool modern takes on him too. Do you do you did you read much of the old Golden Age like Hawkman stories? Where are they pretty like is the storyline pretty comparable? Because I've always really, really liked Hawkman's yeah. sort of, you know, storylines yeah. and his resurrecting to find his lover and like all that kind of stuff that we get presented with in the modern age. I don't know if that's the same as the character was written back in the day. You know, I'm not sure so this is me completely guessing. I haven't read yeah. story origins going to Golden Age Hawkman. I'm going to guess the stories that you're familiar with probably started around the Silver Age Hawkman. Yeah. I'm going to guess that his story was probably reworked at some point in there. Sure. Um, no, it could be wrong. Maybe the Golden Age one is exactly the same. So it's worth looking into. Yeah. I'm on the hunt. Yeah. I'll find out. This is a super cool one. I mean, if you're looking for, and I believe it's the last issue in Golden Age Flash Comics too. So, cool battle cover with Hawkman, uh, tied for highest graded, 9.4. You can send it in and get the nice, pretty uh, pedigree label on this one, too. We'll make it pop even more. So, Hell yeah. yeah, this will be a fun one. I mean, I'm watching this one pretty closely to see where, where this goes at. I'm tempted on this one myself. <laughs> It's hard to it's hard to work in stuff that you really like to buy yourself, right? Dude, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, it's like working at a casino, but like yeah, just, you're just a, give me your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how it was as a as a early college kid working at Best Buy. Are you kidding me? Like, oh, dude, yeah, like, it's discounts so on everything. Love working with these. Uh, what do we got yeah. next up? So next up, we've got Jumbo eight five. Yeah, the Jumbo Comics forty two. So only 12 universal copies on this one just a, basically a handful in the grand scheme wow. out there. Uh, tie for highest grade 8.5 on this super strong fmv we're thinking about 2500 to 3000. i mean so early jumbo comics are almost the whole title focuses really heavily on this character sheena kind of a female 
Tarzan type character. Um, there you go. Yeah, really cool things about this one. So, Danzel Narowich does a lot of the cover work and a lot of the interiors. You do get a lot of work from Matt Baker, which so I don't believe. I think you oh, get one Matt that. Baker cover early in Jumbo, but then most of his work is going to be interior for Jumbo. So you get a lot of really quality, cool drawings inside of uh, any of the Sheena stories, a lot of the Jumbo comics. So it's a cool one. I think. I mean, I think for being twelve universal copies, eight point five highest graded. 2,500, 3,000 is pretty fair for that. 12 copies Not is bad. nothing. Yeah, no, that's, so that's a cool one. To, yeah, I mean, you can grab the top tier book in this for a pretty fair rate. And in comparison to some other titles out there, I think it would it would run you much more. Right. And a good thing right. with these Fiction House books, the colors look pretty solid on it. A lot of the times on Fiction House books, even high grade, you can get some color distortion, some color fading a lot of the time. Um, mm. Everything on this looks solid. The dark blue is there. Yellow stands out from the orange, all that. So it's a great yeah. looking copy for a fiction house book as well. Yeah, and I mean you you can see with the internal scans that I'll click through here, like the the color palette and tones are matching the cover pretty well, so, uh, to indicate you know like yeah. a lack of fading, like Nate just mentioned. Um, it's also kind of cool when I was poking through the story and the few pages I found. I, I mean. It makes sense when you think about it, but Sheena was out there fighting the good fight in the jungle against the Nazis, teaming yeah. up with the Leopard Men. Like, <laughs> that's yeah, great stuff, was, man. Uh, I mean, you, you have an era where the kind of jungle action-y stuff was really popular. Yeah. And then you have the pivot towards sci-fi eventually, and everything goes that direction or more right. so. But I think these are super cool stories. Um, it's an awesome character. She's a pretty long running character for Golden Age. She appears yeah. in a bunch of Fiction House stuff. And also, I love Fiction House. I don't know how much you've looked into Fiction House interiors are great. I love yeah. the way they do their panels and all that. I feel like. I do too. Yeah, even. I feel like Fiction House interiors, you can see a lot of influence into Silver Age panels and how they're laid out and all that. Yeah. As well. Like and right here with like the little half circle in the middle panel there, just yeah. like getting creative with the way your panel layout is really goes a long way for me when I'm reading books to keep me engaged. Yep. House interiors are some of the best out there. So if you have some raw ones at home, I highly recommend flip through them. Um, there's always some really cool imagery inside some, especially if you start getting some of the Matt Baker interiors, there's some great stuff in there. And you get a you get to see a little bit of the 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 way of thinking at the times. You got this uh, buff white hero saving the you know the the local lady and her kid. Just <laughs> just kind of funny when you notice like the stereotypes and some of the stuff oh, that man. were especially part of back, popular you, you read some of the word bubbles and some of these old ones too. Yeah. It's yeah, there's some wild stuff. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's like a funny too like. They're like, all right, how are we going to make the Leopard Men uh, really clearly Nazi collaborators? Let's just slap a ginormous effing swastika onto the end of their hunting spear. Not That's efficient, not aerodynamic, makes no sense whatsoever, but we got to put it somewhere. Oh, I mean, you see everything going. You see swastika wearing yeah. gorillas. You see, like, yeah, I mean, it is everything. So, I mean, that was kind of the... That was like a common thing about it. Like, hey, how do we want to show that this is a bad character? They're like, oh, let's just throw a swastika on it. And then now it's yeah. a bad character. It's like so that was how you did it back. It didn't matter how absurd it was, that you just yeah. that was kind of the go-to thing. It's like now if it's a bad character, they're not using an iPhone. Yeah. Have you heard that? That's like the <laughs> it's like the Hollywood thing. Right? Can't have the villains using an iPhone. <laughs> Spoiler alert. What uh, do we got yeah, look at this. On the list? Look at that. Look at that swastika on the spear. That's so absurd. Oh, yeah. No, I was looking through those interiors earlier. That's why I always say, like, if you have Fiction House books, pop them open, look through it. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's some really interesting stuff in there. All right. Let's move on to, in my oh. opinion, probably one of the big boys and coolest books in the lots for this week's sale. Yeah, man. This is a massive one. Uh, the Planet Comics 59 Mile High. You don't get better than this. This is a top tier example of a Golden Age book. So, Big one here. So you've got 98 Universals. Uh, it's a Fiction House book, Planet, super popular. Not surprised to see that there's 98 Universals, which is pretty cool that out of almost 100, this is the top. So yeah. it is tied for highest graded. Um, there's one other 9.8 out there that showed up relatively recently. I haven't seen a photo of it. I just saw it marked on the census. 
uh, looking at some other real high grade copies that have sold, some other 9.8s, we're putting FMV on this one at 10,000 to 15,000. Reason nice. being is, I mean, if you're a Planet Comics fan, sci-fi, Golden Age, this is a, this would be an example that you would put as like a collection definer. If you wanted a really special piece, I mean, it's a top sci-fi, mile high, 9.8, a flawless 9.8. Sometimes you yeah. get some 9.8s that you're like, meh, the color, maybe there's a little mark, but it's still, no, this is, there's absolutely nothing you could pick on this book. So, That's incredible. yeah, I expect a lot of people are going to, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people that are looking at this. This is the, uh, this is the big one. So, yeah, yeah, it's a really cool one on this. You know, I remember the Mile High Planet sold, a lot of them sold in a batch back a few years back. And after that, they went silent. So it's cool to see one of these pop up because I haven't seen one from that that sale in a long time. So, yeah, so, yeah, it's cool that. And I'm super glad Shortbox got the opportunity to put this out there. It's going to be a cool one. Um, it's also when I was looking up this one, if anyone wants to know why it's so cool and look at the interiors. This was one of the only books in this batch that I was looking for. I was able to find a fully online readable copy of this. So if you're bidding on it, you want it, obviously you maybe want to read it, but you're not going to crack out a 98 mile high, uh, just hop online and you can check out some of the internals. I grabbed a couple pages so we could take a quick look. Just like the super heavy use of red. Nate and I were talking yeah. about that a little earlier. Like it's just kind of crazy to me how all the main characters, all the people that are important, they're all wearing something that's red, whether it's a cape, a cloak, a dress, shoes. It's kind of wild, but I see that pattern throughout the pages I was reading. You see it a ton. You see, you know, the red girls and the red dress girls all the time on covers. You see it use a lot of interiors on important people. I don't know if I'm going to guess it was just they knew it popped. They just knew that your eyes were drawn to it. Yeah. I know, but something about it, though, is red, especially on covers. It's really hard to hold up well. A lot of right. red, especially Fiction House, turned to orange. So if you can find red on Fiction House, that's amazing. Because most of the time it turns to more of an orange. Yeah. And this one's clearly a little more sci-fi oriented. Yeah. Man, absolutely. such a cool cover. Red comics, probably the, I mean, I think in most collectors' minds, that's the go-to sci-fi title for Golden Age collecting. Yeah. Um, you get a lot of cool different characters in Planet Comics, great stories. The splash pages are always amazing. Um, you get more Matt Baker interiors in Planet Comics as well. So Arrowitch, you get a lot of cool stuff in there. So this is, I mean, it's a big title. It's always been collected well. It's a highest example. I mean, this is, I think, definitely your, uh, this is going to be the one to watch in the auction. I think a lot yeah. of people are going to be after this one. Bell of the ball. Yeah, Absolutely. All right, let's pop over to Mr. Mystery. Yeah, so we're at our last uh, highlight one here, Mr. Mystery 16, 40 Universals. This is the second highest graded copy. FMV, we're going to say around 3,000 to 4,000 on this one. Um, real cool, classic pre-core horror cover. Uh, you got the girl right front and center across the whole book, which is different for a perspective because usually – the girl's somewhere in the middle-ish to the background. The background the different that she takes yeah. up the entire kind of up close front <laughs> of the book. Uh, the mummy's pretty interesting looking on this. If you look at his little, uh, his mummy wrap there, it's weirdly organized tight. It almost looks like circus raffle yeah. tickets. <laughs> I was just about to say, it looks like raffle, like he's trying to get her to yeah. buy raffle tickets for the, yeah, for the parade. Looks, <laughs> the raffle looks more like a... Yeah, the uh, raffle tickets on this one. But it's a cool one. Mr. Mystery, big title for PCH guys. Uh, second highest on this one. So if you're a pre-code horror fan, this is going to be one to watch. Um, I mean, you don't see a lot of copies in general of this one, but a second highest. A lot of the big pre-code horror fans, they lock up these top graded stuff and you don't see it again for a long time. So yeah. if you're a pre-code horror guy, keep an eye on this one. I thought it was also kind of interesting too when you look at some of the like the brighter scans of this book mm -hmm. the what we were just talking about that all the bondage gals always have a red dress or something like that this does not follow that trend she's actually wearing a pink dress which one could argue is a shade of red but pretty <laughs> noticeable difference when i'm looking at all these bondage covers and there's this lady in like pink yeah Whatever. No, it is, it is. It's different. It stands out. Your eyes, I mean, immediately drawn to it because she is so 
up front and across right, the whole right. thing. Like you can't, it draws your eye to it. So it's yeah. a great example. Great pre-code horror book. Mr. Mystery is a great title for pre-code horror. I wouldn't expect uh, any PCH fans are going to be watching this one. What did we say the expected range or what we think this one will That's do? Be on this one, I'm going to say between 3,000 and 4,000 on this one. Second nice. highest, okay. I would guess that top highest is locked away for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll so convince them to sell it at a short box auction someday. So these were some of the highlight books, some of the big ones I wanted to point out some cool facts on. Uh, I think the Circus Comics Try One is going to be a lot. There's a lot to learn about that book for a lot of guys. Even as yeah. like I've been in Golden Age is my main thing for a long time. I had to do some research to learn about all there is to do with that book. So that's a real cool one. So we have a historical piece. We have some pinnacle pieces in the planet and the flash, absolute top copy examples, some great PCH. So this is a well-rounded auction. There's some here for everyone. And kind of on that note, was there some other, to you, was there some other books that were not highlight books that stood out to you? Yeah, man. Okay, so <clears throat> Terry Tunes. How did I not yeah. know the covers are so freaking cool, man? Like the shading yeah. on them is kind of mind blowing. You don't even get shading like that on a lot of like the human characters that are popping up around that age. Like just the level they are of underrated. art is incredible. If, if you see them up close too, like I think it's different where if you see a picture of it, you're like, oh, that's cool. But then you see a nice copy in person. Yeah. And then you see the coloration like you're talking about, the yeah. shading. No, they're, they're really, really cool books. I love those timely, uh, funny animal books. Mm -hmm. They're really cool. And yeah. they are almost impossible to find in high grade. I mean, of it's hard we to have, we, oh yeah, ours aren't high grade in this sale, but we've got mm -hmm. some really incredibly well presenting like two, five to four O, oh, you know, yeah. three different Terry tune comics in this auction. Uh, two of them real heavy yellow backgrounds with the red letters. It's just, they look way better than the technical grade, which as yeah. a buyer, like, that's that's kind of the dream because you can pay a little For less, sure. but get a book that looks amazing. So that's one I would look at. I mean, if you like cartoon type stuff, yeah, like it's a it's a weird spin on like dark topics, like World War II dark drop, but it's <laughs> but it's presented like in a funny animal format. So yeah, yeah. there. I think it's a cool title, man. I think. Uh, it's one people need to pay attention to a little more, especially if you ever see a timely animal book above a six, it's you, you should consider grabbing it because they're almost impossible in that range. Yeah. And you know, the style kind of reminds me, I know it's a more of like a current thing, but like cuphead animation, like that whole yeah. style kind of coming back into popularity a bit. I mean, yeah. it speaks to sort of the timeless, sort of art this is like this is stuff yeah. that was coming out in the freaking 40s or the 50s or something right like the yeah. terry tunes are yeah 43 43 so it's kind of cool to see us return to that and yeah it's kind of like you got uh dave stevens you know he's not like a he's not a 40s 50s artist he's a more modern guy but he does art that people all the time are like that's a cool golden age book so it's kind of nice to see these modern artists, modern era artists sort of returning to these old art styles and having them just be so wholeheartedly accepted enthusiastically by the collecting community. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right. I say I really appreciate Kevin. It's been awesome talking with you, uh, yeah, going through all these books. I'm glad that we can sit here and hopefully we've somewhere pointing something out to people that they didn't notice about these books. Because yeah. I, even though I've been doing this a long time, I learn something new about these almost every time I look at it. There's a lot of information to take in on these. So I'm excited to see the auction play out. Uh, we got some real fun stuff. I'm going to heavily watch The Planet, The Flash, uh, even that Circus Comics Riot one. So this should be a fun yeah. auction, man. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll take this opportunity to let anyone out there watching, if you've got some books like this, or maybe some books more in the superhero vein that you'd like to submit for auctions, you can either reach out to Nate or myself on Instagram. Uh, Kevin at shortbox.com. Just shoot me an email. Let me know what you're wanting to sell. We'll take a look at it and see what we can do to help you turn that into some money. Um, as always, guys, thank you very much for joining us and kind of cruising through this cool old paper with us. Don't forget to check out the auction, which ends on Wednesday. Get those bids in before it's done. Yep, um, absolutely. Kevin, I appreciate your time, man. Take care of yourself. You too, brother. Talk to you later.